rolled out from this event and the ways in which you would like to help contribute to the just transition. So, um, this group's paying attention. Would you like to go with it? Go first? You're not? Okay. How about this group since you're so close? Yeah. Team member and friends who joined? Just a minute. We're still ready. I just have to finish one word. And we'll start with Team Muscle here, and then we'll just we'll just rotate clockwise through the room, more or less. So, Sun, you'll be second. Fire and Wind, you'll be third. Here, I'll go hold. If you want, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, my name is Robbie, and we're with Team Muscle Slash Sky, or Sky Muscle, I guess. Sounds pretty cool. Um, so, a couple of things that we talked about, um, messages we wanted to share. Um, so, for example, getting involved with Car Share, um, the Regina Car Share Cooperative. We just put that up on the board there. Um, also, the emphasis on actually going where people are and not getting stuck in our organizations or our silos so that we can um, better recruit people that maybe are involved in different ways around common, common issues. Um, and a big, another big piece of their messaging was around using pipeline messaging um, against, against them, essentially. So the example of, you know, we need to get our resources to market, that we're talking about bitumen, but well, why can't that be solar? This is our resource in the province. Um, so using that messaging, and we want to work to get trusted people elected, but then continue to hold them accountable while also congratulating them for their wins and encouraging a positive movement. Um, and we also want to create opportunities for youth to have decision-making power, not just getting them involved, but creating things like youth committees, um, projects where students can actually take action and see positive results from what they do, um, so that they're not always having to tell us how to act, that uh, we're actually supporting them in, in achieving their own visions, um, and demanding our energy company, companies be accountable and get involved, so putting more pressure directly on our um, few energy companies here in the province, so that was us. We're the sun group over there. It was hard to sum up. The, we're the burning planet. It was hard to sum up our conversation because we, we arranged quite a bit. But I think in terms of uh, the last couple of questions, we talked about the need for our messages and moving forward to first start out as realistic and graphic and shocking. We talked about how the, the messaging coming from the young people today was really powerful and impactful. And the indigenous voices coming forward really resonated with quite a lot of us too. So we talked about leading with that, uh, keeping, like telling the truth about the urgency and uh, the consequences of the problem we're facing, and making sure that the messages coming forward are diverse and offer a diversity of tactics. But then balancing that with some positive solutions, that there's the need and the appetite for a vision, a, an ambitious, clear vision with a, a plan and then uh, empowering people a bit to think that we can do this together. It's, it's not making it fluffy, it's saying that we need collective action. And then celebrating what is happening. Uh, we talked about how uh, it might help to talk to people about what this is going to cost, or somehow uniting people around money, that's kind of a, it's used on the other side I think a lot, so getting people on board by saying, um, Here's what it's going to look like for you. Here's what it might cost. Here's what your new job can be, and laying out clear paths to that. Uh, are there other pieces that you guys want to add from this? Thumbs up. Okay. We got a kiss. Thanks. Uh, I was from the Water Group. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of key messages, we definitely think that amplifying messages from. Uh, the speakers this weekend, but especially the youth uh, that spoke to us last and uh, the Indigenous leaders who spoke to us first. 
those messages in particular were resonating. And then in terms of the sort of in between, we really uh, were thinking about how do we frame, you know, just transition to to be honest about, you know, some of those costs and some of the um, the, the conditions that might worsen, but really show that there's a lot to gain in restructuring our society to be more fair, and that for the most part, lots of people will have. Um, you know, might have a better uh, experience engaging with some of the, the key determinants of their lives compared to how they're um, navigating them now. And so we need to think about how to bring authenticity and honesty to our conversations, but really lay it out that, you know, the status quo isn't really working for anyone, and there's lots to be gained uh, in how we relate to each other, uh, and that there's, there's a lot of choices we can benefit from. Um, so in terms of actions, we talked a lot about, you know, how do we actually reach those folks who might maybe feel like they have a lot to lose and, and try to um, be respectful and engage, um, not just thinking we can convince them with, you know, one presentation that uh, they should forget everything they once thought about their lives and join our team or something, but that we could actually have uh, more face-to-face -face conversations and, and carve out those plans together. Thanks. Um, our table had the benefit of actually having like at least half of the youth panel at it, so we got a lot of their feedback. Um, I'm just going to sort of deal with the last question, um, just returning back to what we were talking about. So um, I was talking to them about like what are we all going to do collectively over the next year, and also what messages do you think would resonate with people in Saskatchewan, like people who may say we can't take action on climate change because it's too costly or it'll cost jobs or things like that. Um, so one of the things they talk about is, is leaving people with the sense that they can make a difference, like even if it is a small change, that they, they feel um, that they have the capacity to make that change as an individual. And they were really not having any of the argument that like if, you know, whatever Canada does doesn't matter. Um, that if they said that if everyone acts like that, then we won't get anything done on climate change. So it's it's not going to help us solve any problems. Um, and then we were talking about uh, the reality is that none of us can hide from climate change. So that is something that unites us all in terms of um, of thinking about the question of how to to pursue a just transition. And uh, and then lastly, we were talking about sort of the enormous influence that industrial agriculture has and how to, to challenge that. Um, narrative, especially around sort of, I think Marcella said it best when she said, uh, you know, growing food isn't the problem, it's how we are growing food. Um, so talking to farmers more about how we can get smaller, go organic, and start to reduce the emissions coming from our agriculture sector. So I'm speaking from Rokas. We have a long list, we've shortened it. Um, our major thought was that we not only need to support Indigenous climate leadership, we need to champion for it and make sure that everybody realizes that they are the leaders. We need to build our relationship with nature as an essential step to political and philosophical transition. And as individuals, we need to contact our MPs, our MLEs, and our councillors again and again and again. Hello. I'm from Team River, which ran into the ocean. Yeah. Flowed into the ocean. Uh, so we also had a very long and fruitful conversation, but I've uh, summed it up to three themes. Uh, we talked a lot about education uh, at all levels, from elementary school right up into post-secondary, um, as a really important part of this worldview change that needs to happen, first and foremost, um, and the importance of um, uh, of making sure that that our that our children are are, are getting those teachings about and uh, and learning that relationship to land, um, and also learning about the treaties uh, and our responsibilities as treaty people. Um, and then we and in post secondary, 
Uh, we talked about uh, how you know we have young people who are paying an astronomical amount of tuition to train for jobs that may not exist uh, in five, ten years, uh, and and what we what we can do or what the post-secondary uh, institutions can do uh, to to move this transition forward. Um, we also talked a lot about uh, community-led innovations and community-led transitions, uh, how we need to center the voices of the people who have the most, the, the most to lose. Uh, that's indigenous people, that's young people, that's workers. Um, and I think addressing the fears that some of those people have, that uh, workers especially, that what we're talking about is shutting it off tomorrow, uh, when really that's what industry does. Industry loses money and shuts it down and leaves. That's, that's not what we're talking about. Um, and then we talked a lot, a lot, a lot about remediation uh, funds, about royalties, and about environmental protections, and how uh, over the last uh, few years especially, we've seen uh, uh, a degradation of those things, as opposed to um, as opposed to really holding our governments accountable for, for protecting our environment, for making sure that the royalties that we're getting for this development are fair, so that we have money to put into transition, um, and, and about moving the cost of remediation of cleanup to the beginning of a project as opposed to just waiting to see what happens at the end, and then having no power uh, to, to hold those companies accountable for their mess. Uh, I think that summed it up. Yes. Okay. Hi there. Uh, we were Team Earth. We are Team Earth, I guess. Um, on the messaging front, uh, we started off by saying we like to talk earlier today about relationships, about establishing relationships with people in the other point of view, and finding out what matters to them and what we have in common and how to reach them that way. We also talked about tailoring messages to particular audiences, so trying to uh, not just say the same thing to everybody because you're going to lose some people. Uh, we talked about the idea of promoting a climate effort in the way we used to talk about a war effort, that the idea that, that this is something that everybody in the community needs to be working on every day in some small way. Um, there was a lot of talk about messaging around the carbon tax and about the misunderstandings and about what that can do and what it can't do and, and trying to get away from the knee-jerk reactions. Then there was uh, pointing out highlighting success stories and the one that was brought up was uh, the, the recent uh, announcement by the Kawasas people of the, the solar and wind and storage plant there. Uh, those are the things we need to really highlight and get excited about in front of people. Um, there was a lot of talk about self-regulating, uh, about about trying to instead of just giving, uh, instead of we used to talk about giving back to the community, well, you should be talking about what you can give up for the community. Um, and on top of everything, uh, oh yeah, uh, look at the numbers. Uh, there's a lot of people saying, okay, oil and gas, but I mean that's the whole economy, isn't it? Well, actually, it's a much smaller part of the economy. Than, than you would expect. And look up the numbers, find them, talk to people about them. And most importantly, ask leaders what is their plan. Ask everybody around you what is their plan. What are you doing about climate change, short term, medium term, and long term? So our actions. Uh, a lot of people are going to get involved with some of the groups that they heard about today. The Solar Co-op, the ICA, that kind of thing, um, the Blue Dot, all of that kind of thing. Please, you know, give these people your your support. Online activisms, uh, pestering politicians. Again, you can't stress that enough. Uh, education. Um, if you have any access to people who have control over education. We can't just be teaching our kids the same old things over and over again, otherwise the cycle is just going to repeat. Volunteering, of course. Uh, somebody pointed out this province is, has a dearth of organizing people who, are, who really know how to get people moving. Um, we need to build that structure in this province. An investment, talk with your money. Put your money into things that you think are worthwhile. Um, something biogas was mentioned. 
any of these these things, solar, wind, whatever, if you find an opportunity to invest, invest. So that's uh, a lot of things in a short period of time, but that's what we came up with. All right. Thank you, everybody, for staying till the bitter end and having such great discussions. If you want to continue those discussions, there are now a series of um, ideas and um, people who are signing up um, based on their level of commitment um, on these sheets on the side. We have this room until 4.30, so you can uh, walk around and sign up there. You also have um, on the back of the schedules on your tables, evaluation forms. Nobody ever wants to do these. <laughs> but please, if you do have a couple seconds, um, fill them out. And um, there's a box in the back by the table where Bonnie is um, to deposit them. I want to conclude by saying um, thank yous to so many people, but most importantly, um, the co-hosts of this event, including Unifor, they have free stuff to give out at their table back there if you want to take things home. Um, the Regina Public Interest Research Group, the uh, Climate Justice Saskatoon, the Corporate Mapping Project, who really actually provided almost all of the money, <laughs> and SAS Forward. So, the folks at SAS Forward, you can find us on a website, www.sasforward.ca. And if you did register and you want to get connected to some of these things, send a message to um, SAS Forward, and we'll try to uh, collate some of uh, people's interests and get put people in touch with each other. So we're hoping that these conversations will continue um, after today. But I think it's been um, a real big success having everybody here. Um, I'm just thrilled about it. I want to also thank a whole bunch of other people. So those include all of the presenters that you saw. We did the, um, the summit on a budget, and so people didn't get honorariums. <laughs> so thank you all for um, the uh, really big commitment that you put into making your presentations accessible to the public. Um, preparing for the media, answering my hundreds of emails in advance. Um, a special thank you to uh, Jared and Josh for taking the lead on the youth, um, and also to Michelle and Philip um, for working with the uh, youth at Burt Fox. Um, a very special thank you to Bonnie, who was there all the way in all of the planning and organizing and uh, really put a lot of effort and thought into um, how the events uh, went down. We had a lot of volunteers who were your facilitators. Um, they, I think they did a really great job of keeping the conversation on track. Saima Desai and Paula Crazy and Winzel, who did um, infographics and those really pretty biographies that we were tweeting out on um, and putting up on Facebook um, in advance. Eagle Claw Tom, who's gone home, who was managing the sound and video recording, so we're going to have a meeting coming up to decide like what is it we want to do with um, the video recording and the audio recordings that we have. Um, so that, you know, you'll, you'll see those in some format. <laughs> um, the child caregivers, you've also gone home. <laughs> I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. I already should thank the um, caterers. Is there anybody else that I'm forgetting? Chelsea, Chelsea. For the Chelsea for the notes, the graphic notes, which were up there, but I'm somewhere in here. but they're not here in person to thank. To thank. Um, and just each and every one of you for coming out um, and being, um, 
you know, really constructive. I thought that um, the conversations were really rich, at least the ones that I, were involved, I was involved in. And I hope that we can move forward together in a good way. Um, and I look forward to doing that with you all. Thank you. <laughs>